Hello everyone and welcome to Behind the Project, a Tableau community event series where we'll be going live here on YouTube with community project leaders to talk about how you can grow your data viz skills in a fun and collaborative way. So don't be shy in the chat, we would love to know who is joining us and where you're tuning in from and we'll also be answering your questions at the end of today's talk. So feel free to drop your questions in at any point and we'll make a note of them to ask at the end. And this talk is being recorded, so if you do need to drop early, don't worry at all. You can come back anytime and watch it on YouTube later. My name is Priya Padam, and I am a Tableau Notrix consultant at the Information Lab and a Tableau Public Ambassador. And I will be the host of this series, and I'm so excited to introduce our guest today. Now, this is the third episode in this series, and today we're talking all about real-world fake data. Now, Real World Fake Data is a monthly data viz challenge to practice creating business dashboards across various industries and departments. And I have some questions ready to go for our guests to get a better idea of what goes on behind the scenes, how the project runs, and so on. So let's get started. And I am very fortunate to have both of the project leaders with us today, Mark and Jackie, and I'd love to have you both quickly introduce yourselves. So Mark, can you start us off, please? Sure. Uh, I'm Mark Bradborn. Uh, I'm a national solutions engineer with Tableau. Um, I've been with Tableau for about three years, but prior to that, I was a social ambassador as well as a co-leader of the Cleveland user group. Uh, Jackie, go ahead. Um Hi, I'm Jackie Moore. I am a senior data visualization and analytics consultant at Clear Intelligence. Um, I'm a three-time Tableau social ambassador, and I co-lead the Boston Tableau user group. Um, I blog at Do More With Data along with my husband, and I recently joined the Real World Fake Data team uh, with Mark. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and you make such a great team as well. Thank you so much for introducing yourselves. I think it's time for us to jump into some questions and find out more about your project. So Mark, can you tell us a little bit more about the project and why you started it, please? Sure. So uh, if anybody knows anything about me, you know that I was a huge Makeover Monday advocate um, and did it for like three years straight without missing a week. But the one thing that I always felt like sometimes was missing from Makeover Monday was that true business application. Like I would pick things up from my Makeover Monday work that I could bring back to work, but like being able to flex that like real data muscle was difficult in public, obviously. Um, so when COVID hit, I was like kind of chewing around with this idea and I was like, can I make fake data sets? And is it reasonable to have people visualize them? So I dreamed up like 12 different scenarios and uh, visualized, or I, I sorry, I, I basically mocked up 10 data sets. I found one that I anonymized. And then the, the first one that we did, we used the Consumer Financial Protection Board's complaint data, which I anonymized. So we weren't calling out any banks. Um, and it just kind of rolled from there. And uh, it's been really interesting uh, to see the results. Definitely. And I just love how inspirational it's been for everyone in the community to finally have references to look at for work. And it has helped me so much too. So thank you for creating this challenge. It's been beneficial, definitely. <laughs> um, so Jackie, what Tableau skills can someone expect to learn from this project? I think you can uh, expect to learn how to take a new data set potentially in a business domain that you haven't worked with before um, and understand what is in that data, what are the important metrics for that business domain um, in this new um, season of real world fake data, we um, added the idea of having requirements as well. Um, so understanding the requirements and parsing them out into what that looks like as far as the dashboard. So these are some of the real skills that you need to be able to build the dashboards and it lets you flex that as well as try out some things that maybe you haven't been able to at work. I, I love that and I love how 
you are getting that real world experience and it's kind of in a safe environment and you can get feedback from people before maybe you even join that career path. You can get that that knowledge and that experience and the feedback and that will prepare you. So I love that as well. Thank you for bringing back season two as well. I think that's great. Um, so Mark, who do you think is the ideal audience for your challenges? So honestly, I think they're they're open to anybody um, from the person just starting out uh, you know, and, and learning Tableau to seasoned veterans um, who have actually, I've seen a, a couple of instances where they've learned quite a bit because it's a domain they're not used to and they've gotten feedback from, from somebody in that domain. Um, so I think it's, it's great for everybody. And I think the really nice thing is that it allows people to really build a portfolio of quote unquote professional work so that when they're sharing their public profile with employers, they can kind of see, okay, this is the kind of skill that this person can bring to the table. And it's not so much the data art side of it, it's more of the best practices side. Yeah, definitely. And when you said portfolio and kind of building it up, that is so true because then you have a collection of different industries and then you can apply to different job roles. And yeah, it really sets you up well. So I love that too. So this next question is for both of you. So we'll start with Mark. What tips or advice do you have for someone thinking about taking part in this project? So I think the the, the main tip that I can give to anybody doing this community project or anyone is just to really step out and do it. It can be really intimidating when you see other people's work, um, you know, especially if they've been doing it for years and you might not realize it. you might think they just started and they're producing, you know, award-winning visas, whereas taking that first step into the, the community and like putting yourself out there publicly is really difficult, especially like in 2016, when I first did it, um, I think I threw away my first four visas before I actually shared one publicly for Makeover Monday. Um, but once you do it, like people start commenting and, and you realize that everybody is out here really trying to help raise all the boats in the tide. And, you know, they want you to be better and they want you to just you know, really contribute to the community overall. So, you know, I think the the tip I give is just go for it. Yeah, I completely yeah. agree. And I completely agree as well with the fact where you said that kind of it raises everyone up and everyone wants to see people succeed. So that's amazing um, and goes for every project as well. Um, how about you, Jackie? What do you think? Yeah, I, I think getting out there and doing it uh, and to add on to that, um, you know, we're all coming at it with different um, motivations and reasons that we want to do it, different experience levels, but also different amounts of time um, that we have for extracurriculars, um, especially about topics that are less fun than some of the things that you might uh, publish on uh, Tableau Public. And, and I think, you know, if you think about the dashboards that you would build for work, not all of them are going to be gorgeous, long builds. Uh, you can still get something out there in a short amount of time that still looks really nice. Um, or if you have more time, you can invest it to build these um, really beautiful standout portfolio pieces. Um, so I think just coming at it from wherever you are and showing uh, different amounts of time can go into it. So. Perfect. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And I guess now the audience is probably getting very excited and thinking, how can I join in and start making these dashboards? So Jackie, how can the audience get involved in real world fake data? So all of the uh, data and requirements uh, are posted up on Mark's uh, blog, the Sons of Hierarchies. Um, so you can go there. Um, we have the data is up on data.world uh, um, and you can go download it and jump in. Um, there's the links to some of the Tableau accelerators to get some ideas. Um, and we announce when there's new challenges on social, but we also see a lot of people um, going back through the old challenges and building dashboards. Um, so it's it's all there, it's all available to explore. Um, so just jumping in and then um, there's no submission form or anything. It's really just about on um, whatever social platform you're using, just tagging me and Mark and using the hashtag uh, RWFD. Um, and we'll keep an eye out for it. Yeah. 
Amazing. I love how easy it is to just get involved and jump right in. That's perfect. So Mark, is there anything you can share with us in terms of what's coming next? Any secrets, behind the scenes, gossip, anything? <laughs> So the, the good news is we have a lot of data sets. Um, I was able to partner with uh, Nicholas, who uh, is in charge of the Tableau Accelerators, and he was gracious enough to grant me access to the data sets from the accelerators. So we have a good starting point for a lot of different industries, a lot of different you know departments and that kind of idea. So I think the project will run for a while. Um, we have slowed our pace a little bit. Um, we did, just did a collaboration with um, Back to Viz Basics, which was amazing. And through that process, Jackie and I found that um, there's a lot of people who don't post their stuff on social, but if you actually go out to Tableau Public and search the hashtag, we found like a thousand vizs that had been published. And I'm like, there's no way that I missed a thousand tags on social media. So I'm happy that, that people are doing it. Um, Cause it's funny. Cause like, sometimes I'm like, oh man, people aren't participating, but they actually are like a lot of people have bookmarked the, the data sources. Um, so I, either way, how you want to participate, whether you just want to do them and put them out on public, or if you want to share them with us, that's fine with me. Um, but hopefully we'll do a couple more collaborations. Cause that was a lot of fun uh, working with Eric and the team from back to biz basics. And uh, in 2023, I would expect us to have a, uh, at least uh, probably six more, maybe eight more projects. So we'll see how it goes. Wow. When you said that you kind of have connections to get more data sets, I'm sure everyone's right. I I'm excited about that. I'm kind of one of those people who does it secretly. So maybe I should start doing it more publicly and bringing things um, to your attention more. So 2023, I will try that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and thank you both so much for answering my questions and it was so fun to kind of learn more about your project and kind of your goals for the project and what's coming next so thank you very much so with all of that being said it's now time for behind the viz we'll be we'll be looking at your favorite entry for real world fake data so mark if you can go ahead and share your screen and take it away sure thing so um this happened very recently and I was super proud of it. Um, but this viz is uh, from Pradeep uh, Kumar and he won a Information is Beautiful Bronze Award for this real world fake data um, dashboard on HR attrition. And it's just, it, I mean, it truly is stunning. You can kind of see why it, why it was an award winner. Um, beautiful color palette, um, you know, nice use of big numbers to so laid out really well. Um, you know, I love the, the ability to focus on just the attrition numbers versus the attrition versus the retention. Um, there's a lot of interactivity built in. Um, it's just, I don't know, Jackie, wh what were your thoughts when you started looking at this? I think it's just, it's really nicely organized. Uh, so you can kind of orient yourself very quickly and understand what's there. Um, it's got a lot of really easy to read visuals and the, the big numbers, um, but it's also got a couple of really nice features that are almost more app-like, um, like the recent attrition list is, it's, I think, really nice to look at. I think he, it's you know, clear that he was really thoughtful about how somebody in HR would use the dashboard. Yeah, there's a couple of really clever things that I like. Um, like he he put his uh, color legend uh, in a little info box, um, the really nicely styled uh, time frame uh, indic or a time frame indicator with the action. Um, just really, really beautiful work overall. Um, I, I could spend, I don't know how long kind of digging through it, but there, there's a lot here to really appreciate. Um, so I would suggest if, if anybody uh, wanted to really kind of dig into this um, to go out to Tableau Public and check out uh, this piece of work. Um, he, he was super thrilled when it got the award, obviously. And, and uh, I felt like very much a proud papa uh, when it also got, when it got the award. Um, I think that's the the epitome of advertising when it comes to community projects. So, um, so yeah, but I will say there's been quite a few uh, examples that I, I, if we've got some time, I want to pull up um, of, of visits and it's not necessarily 
that they are stunning, but it was the process. So this one from Dorian, um, when he first put it out on Twitter, he talked about how he, he vis- envisioned this on a big screen in a call center. And someone who works with call center data a lot gave him feedback around it and said, you know what? I like the idea, but it's not actually how we would look at it. So he actually wrote a blog about this whole process and did a second version of it based on that person's feedback that would be more powerful to the folks in the call center who are looking at um, this type of data, you know, to be actionable when they're in the day, in the, in their workday. Um, so I just, I love that story. And it's a good example of how you can really learn something about an industry you know nothing about um, through the feedback from the community because it's such a broad community. Yeah, I love the willingness to, to iterate on it. And then I, the resulting dashboard is really, it's well put together. And um, I think, it, you know, Dorian took feedback kind of in public um, and then went out and iterated on it. But I think it's just a great example of how we can reach out to the community for uh, feedback in general. And if you're not comfortable with doing it in public, then you can reach out in private. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do do be careful when you're giving feedback. Um, not everybody is, is always as open as Dorian was in this case. Um, but as long as you're coming from a, a place of of honesty and you know, a willingness to help, hopefully it'll all be taken in, in good form. Um, if I remember correctly, Autumn's was one of the first visualizations that I saw for real world fake data. And this one like won an early visit of the day. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to deal with all of this. Um, but this was just another beautiful, I mean, Autumn makes beautiful dashboards anyway, if you know um, Autumn Batani. Um, she doesn't make unattractive work. Um, and this was no different. Um, just, yeah, I mean, just stunning stuff. Um, or just, yeah, it's got a real, a lot of really cool uh, little features as you keep exploring it. Yeah. Just really just beautiful. I don't know. I don't know what to say about it other than it's, it's amazing. <laughs> um, but like, so we're showing a bunch of, oh, well, let's show this. This one blew me away just from the completeness of it. So when we talk about HR attrition, it is a very deep well of potential metrics and reasons for somebody leaving a company. And Josh Hughes went through and looked at all of these different possibilities that, that could be driving it. You know, is it age? Is it working years? Is it their role? And just the thoughtfulness and the way that this was structured, it, it acts like a web application. And it was just, um, just really, really beautiful. And I love this kind of summary um, where it says, well, here's the, after all this analysis, analysis here are the risk indicators. Um, just fantastic. <laughs> um, but I was going to say, these are beautiful examples, but Jackie, you made the point earlier about, you know, you don't have to flex that muscle so hard because a lot of times in business, we don't have that kind of time. You know, we need quick answers. And um, I brought up yours is not that it's not beautiful, not that it doesn't follow best practices, but can you talk about your process in this? Yeah, I mean, so I think I practice what I preach. Uh, this was before I joined the project. Um, uh, and I wanted to do something that, um, even though it's not that, it, it's not a particularly attractive dashboard, um, I think I wanted to use all kind of native functionality and build something that kind of looks like um, something that would, would be developed rather quickly. Um, and kind of going over some, you know, real world um, metrics and different ways to look at it, but really focusing on not spending a lot of time on it um, and getting it out there. And how long would you say that you worked on this? Do you remember? I know this was a while ago. Yeah, um, I think it probably four, six, 
hours, something like that. I tried to keep it really slim. And then I came back to it later and I added um, some interactivity. So probably a day or two um, in, in it total, um, you know, to, to do some more dynamic things like the overlay and swapping the dimensions and, and things like that. Yeah. So, so basically a reasonable amount of time that you would spend on a work project. Yeah. So, and Priya, I don't want you to feel left out because this one was another uh, fairly early one, beautiful piece of work. But um, as I dug into this, it's all Tableau native, um, but it looks like something that somebody would have done in Figma. So why don't you tell us about your dashboard? <laughs> I wasn't expecting <laughs> to be giving a demo, but thank you, Mark. <laughs> um, <laughs> I kind of had the same. Um, so this was I made this quite a while ago, and I'm trying to like put myself back into the mindset. But I think I had the same kind of um, goal as Jackie in the sense that I wanted to just make something fast. In fact, it might have been during um, when I had some time to just make a dashboard during work, and I wanted to show someone what's possible. For example, so I just kind of. Did something very quickly and I wanted to just kind of get the message across so I wanted it to be clean but then I also wanted it to just be very simple as well um so there's not really any frills to it <laughs> but I just instead of doing um like a lot of KPIs I just kept it as simple bands at the top and then the color scheme is very simple um I guess the focus of this biz was padding <laughs> because I'm a huge fan of padding on mm. dashboards <laughs> um but yeah, so uh, yeah, I just tried to keep it very minimalistic. And uh, yeah, you mentioned how it's all Tableau native. Um, that I, I mean, in all the kind of placements I've been on at the data school, um, they've never had Figma or any other design tool. So I wanted to make sure that I can still make uh, a nice looking dashboard just using Tableau. So um, that was also trying to test that as well because I didn't have Figma to lean on <laughs> for the biz. <laughs> no, and I, I think the result is is fantastic. Uh, so thank you very uh, much. I'm, I'm sorry to put you on the spot like that, but I thought, <laughs> I thought it would be fun, and I was right. <laughs> I think it's rare. In, it's, it's it's rare in a business environment that that you're doing the Figma layouts and things, mm -hmm. right? And unless you're doing um, you know, executive facing dashboards, the majority of the dashboards are going to be Tableau native and, and they can be beautiful. So. Yep, absolutely. So, all right. Um, that's <laughs> all I say, is that, is that, and do we get any questions? So let's see. So I don't think we got any questions, but um, I do have a question for you. So is there anything that you've learned from kind of looking at any of the entries that you've started to apply in your own business at work. So any kind of, let's say, functionality or any interactivity that you've now kind of taken away and started to use? From an, from an interactivity and, and I think people's use of buttons, like Josh Hughes's kind of layout, like just the way that it kind of just feels like it's part of the the screen rather than like a, a harsh button kind of thing. Like that's one thing that I have taken away and I've started to try and apply. The other thing that I always pick up from is the one thing that I've never done is um, I've never really got my own style. Like I can see certain people's vizs in the community and I know that's so-and-so's viz. And I always just kind of pick up random things and I'll try them for a week or two. And I'm like, oh, that's a really cool technique. So there's a lot of that happens in real world, world fake data for me. Yeah, I think it's similar to what, what Mark said about the, you know, buttons, right? It's the app type feeling um, of a lot of these dashboards, not the, the dashboards need to look like apps, but I've noticed that it feels more familiar and more seamless with whatever you're working with. So I think that it's a huge um value add, especially if you're working with business users that aren't uh, as familiar with using dashboards to make it feel less like something different. Um, I think it's a really nice touch that I've started to think a lot more about. Yeah, yeah that's really, I, I completely agree. I, I've noticed how they kind of look more like a website or like an app, like you said. And um, yeah, I've definitely tried to incorporate that in my business as well. It just looks a lot um, cleaner and just 
like you said, it's more familiar, so it's easier to use. So yeah, that's that makes perfect sense. Um, we do have two audience questions as well. So from Ida, is RWFD on a schedule and how do we know when to start or finish? I don't know if we're on a schedule so much as we just kind of <laughs> ebb and flow um, because we recognize there's a lot of stuff that's going on in the community from you know different projects and whatnot. So whenever we kind of feel like or whenever we hit a good pocket to say, okay, I think it's time for the next one. And we'll, we'll kind of fire up the requirements. We've got the data sets, obviously, that we can kind of pull from. Um, so we, we're going somewhere between every six weeks and every quarter right now, depending what's going on. I'd like to get into a normal cadence. Um, but the one thing about this project and any project, there there is really no end, right? So like, I still see people, I still see people building visits from the first season of real world fake data. Um, so there's no like hard due date to say, well, you have to finish by such and such a date. I mean, there is a point where Jackie and I do write a blog post to talk about some entries that we've seen. Um, and we'll usually pop something on social media to say, Hey, we're going to kind of close out this project from our perspective in a week or two. So, you know, if you're working on entries, go ahead and finish those up. Um, but yeah, so no hard and fast rules, but if you follow Jackie and I on, on Twitter and LinkedIn, you'll, you'll definitely see the announcements when the projects start. Perfect. So another question was, do you have any data sets for hospitals? Yes. Uh, season one did have, I believe it was an emergency room data set. Um, but I know that there are other like health data sets out there from uh, health data viz. Lindsay Betzendahl runs that program. Um, so that might be something to check out as well. But I know we do have one. And Pradeep's viz for the hospital um, emergency data was also amazing. So <laughs> yeah, the guy just, <laughs> he just hits home runs. That's all he does is hit home runs. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Perfect. So that wraps up our questions. So thank you so much for answering those. And thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in to Behind the Project. We'll be holding these monthly, so stay tuned to find out who our next guests will be. And I'd like to give a huge thank you to Mark and Jackie for joining us. Do feel free to check out Tableau Public for more DataViz inspiration and share your work with the Global Data Fam. And be sure to join the conversation on real world fake data on Twitter and Tableau Public using the hashtag RWFD. Thank you so much again and take care, everyone. Thanks, Priya. Thank you. Bye.